What's up, everybody? Ooh, that doesn't really work, does it? Can everybody hear me? Just about to hit the midnight hour. Welcome to the overnight hours. Quick change of pace from Among Us and that chaos. Tonight, it's about you guys, it's your stories questions, your advice, you can hit us on Twitter at Overnight Hours. Give us a call, 323-609-3569. Leave a message. Talk about whatever you want. We're all staying up past our bedtime. Your secrets are safe with us. Tonight, we've got two special guests. You all know them. First up, my brother. Kyle will be joining us, AKA Melfi Melfis. Also, can you guys hear me? him, Ian, a.k.a. Third Shift. I'm back. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, dude. You're spoiling the mood, bro. I didn't know we were live. We're live. I'm not. I didn't know. Where's Kyle? I don't know. Oh, that's so weird. I have you, like, you're actually being displayed on my stream. 
so your mouth is out of sync with your words. It's, yeah. Oh, because it's delayed? Yeah, because I have you full screen on mine. Nice. Okay. Oh, well, I shouldn't be showing that to the whole world. So, so Kyle and Ian, is Kyle here yet? I'm here, but Kyle's awfully quiet. Did you try texting him? He might be AFK. Just send out a quick uh, tweet. Let everybody know. Got to use that blue check mark. Facebook. Among Us was fun. Got an email we can look at. An email. Yeah, we've got someone who sent in an email for some advice. Oh, sick. You'll have to run me through some of the format because this is kind of going to in my part. Uh, <clears throat> so basically, the idea behind the overnight hours is a late night talk show. It's like Love Line or Coast to Coast AM. Have you ever heard that show? No, not at all. It's basically that 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 was like the the culty like ghosts and UFOs and stuff. People would call in with their experiences with that. Oh, I never knew that. Yeah, so we'll have some of that if it ever comes up, and then advice. You just hang out late night, overnight radio kind of thing. Oh, well. my Twitch name's not Third Shift for no reason. So it's that. Yes, that's why I'm here. This is my prime hour. I've got four things I need to, four spaces on this tweet that I gotta get rid of. Twitter is over capacity. What? Is that a thing? Weird, it wouldn't let me tweet. <laughs> That's the weirdest I thing. I, like, what are there, too many people in the pool? It reminds me of like one of those like natural disaster movies where everyone tries to call their family at the same time that like no one can make a call out. I feel like a southern gentleman drinking sweet tea right now. And you are back. Oh, you're really quiet. I am? You were just, maybe you're just talking quiet. Oh, I had my, I think, hours. I had my thing lowered, sorry. Oh, yeah. Oh, we're on right Hello, now. Hello, this is, um, Melfi Melfis, and it's, uh, 12 at 12. Or 3 at 12. 12 at 3. <laughs> I don't know what that means. Th but... Are those numbers, or? They are numbers, I... certainly. It was Alan Almond. Alan Almond? Isn't that his name? Almond? Almond? As in the nut? Isn't it? Wait, what? Uh, he's an Almond. All right, let's... Uh... <clears throat> so basically I had you guys on just to hang out, just to talk, see what comes up. We talk about sure. growing up and everything if you want. How much of an asshole I used to be. Oh, that was... Those were stories for everybody. Uh, I always got more of those, though. Uh-oh. I only have a few headliners. Whoa, you got real bright. Dogecoin's at 27 cents right now. I've been trying to get in. Are you in, Kyle? No. Into Doge? You're not Doge in? I got no. 308. Isn't that like 40 cents? It's $83. <laughs> or you something 
Oh, it's that low right now? It was at like, it's up like 80% or something crazy. Well, we do have a, te a text message sent to the overnight hours line. Necesito un appointment para mis two perros, por favor. I, yes. Do you have a translator for that? No, it's just, it's spam. Oh, say the overnight hours hasn't gotten that big yet. Here we go. This is our first text message to the overnight hours. Phone line, 323-609-3569 if you guys want to call in. Leave a message, uh, join our Discord. Maybe you can get in on the show live if you have questions or a story. Um, <clears throat> so I, he followed up with, hello, my name is Javier and I need vaccinations and flea product for my two English Bulldogs. Please, mm -hmm. if you could not put me on the list, I would appreciate it. Well, Javier, let me give you your advice for tonight. You've got the wrong number, sir. I was going to say, I have, I, you were so serious there. I did not know where that was going. <laughs> I'm like, I start feeling really bad for him. <clears throat> Is that a lightsaber? What are you? Yeah, it's a lightsaber. Purple one. Unique choice. We do have an email from uh, Dark Light Capricorn from Rhode Island. Adam, do you want me to read? Do you want us to do this on the air, right? Just to make sure. A week all of a sudden, fuck. I mean, this is it's the drawing. first the first email we've gotten. I don't know. I'll show you that. Great. Okay, so Adam's question is: What should I do to gain more confidence in myself when I get extremely anxious? Oh, that's a good one. Guess first, do you guys have any insight into that? Wait, what was the question? What do I do? What should I do to gain more confidence in myself when I get extremely anxious? <laughs> I feel like he's asking the wrong crowd. I know. <laughs> 30 I know, plus yes. years of yes. anxiety and low self esteem have accumulated into this. Um, I mean, it's. I mean, I think it comes down to we're all our own worst critics. So just try to realize that 90% of the time, most people don't think as lowly of you as you do of yourself. Um, and I don't know, take a breath. I have to do that sometimes. You just got to remind yourself it's in your head. I guess in the end, you really look at yourself and it's going to sound really like not good, but it is good. In the end, we're all inconsequential to unless the people you're really close to. So if you really are getting anxious in a crowd and you feel like everyone's judging you for that split second, some people might be, but tomorrow it won't even be a thing. So is this like specific? Well, I guess as this person listening, like, can we ask follow up questions? Is this like on a date? Like if they're going to meet someone or is it because they said confidence? So I'm thinking if they're getting anxious to like have a date or meet a new friend like that, it's not like a crowdly thing, maybe. It's so like a specific trigger. Oh, it's Adam. Oh, okay. Then. Okay. Yeah. So is there a specific trigger you're referring to? Waiting for an answer. I mean, in my experience, while well, I wait for Adam to respond, um, <clears throat> I've dealt with that stuff my entire life, and it. it oh yeah, you every have day. to. So it, it, the interesting thing is, is that everybody does. Some people are just better at hiding it than others. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, in reality, no one's going to say anything worse to you than you are going to say to yourself. In most cases, like personally, even my, even me, I, I. I say shit to myself, like, why are you doing this? Nobody gives a shit about you. Nobody likes you. What are you doing? What are you doing? And it's not true. It's just self-sabotage. It's like, dra Adam, you want to do drag? It's like RuPaul says. It's that, it's that self-saboteur. It's your inner yeah. saboteur. 
that you have to you have to work with or you have to you have to defeat. I look really fucking cute right now, you guys. Oh my <laughs> god. Well, g give him the advice because you just hit yeah. Him whatever the that he just did there, do that. Yeah. Oh, he's literally. I'm watching full screen. He's checking himself <laughs> out. He bit his own oh lip at himself. Ah. Uh, uh. <laughs> he's biting lips. My name is Garen, and I'm a variety. Well, streamer. there you go. There's your answer. My name is Garen, and I'm a sexy variety streamer. In my cardigan. Oh my God. Welcome. Got a little chest showing. A little, a little hers. Adam, the other thing too that I've learned as I've gotten older, and I hate that saying, but it's true. Like, it, it's gotten easier. Like, you have to remind yourself, like, to like. The biggest advice. It's. I mean, it's sort of related, kind of side tangenting, but don't. It, this sounds cheesy too, but you have to remain true to yourself. Don't try to be what you think someone else will like, because in the end, even if they are liking that side of you, it's going to end up being fake because you're changing yourself to try to appeal to someone. So like. There's so many people in the world that you're not going to appeal to everybody. And if you're not appealing to a certain other person, then that's okay. Like, there will be other people, other friends, other relationships, yada, 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 yada. So don't, like, don't change yourself to try to appeal to the masses because it's not worth it in the end. Because there will be people who value you for yourself. Did he answer it all? Yeah, he said, like, when it comes to things like getting a doctor and getting super nervous... It's, it's just, it's, it's natural. You know what I mean? You know, it's not, it, it's something you can overcome and you can work through, but it's also something that, like I said, everybody, Kyle used to not be able to order his own food at a restaurant. Oh, I remember uh -huh. that. Yeah. Like. Night, sleep well. Oh, here, here. Oh. What does that mean? Um. But no, in my end, when it comes to my anxiety, and like I said, even getting on stream these days, like sometimes I beat myself up over it and, you know, worry about what everyone thinks about me or what I look like or whatever. But in the end, like, I would rather, sometimes you just gotta like fight your way through it in your own mind. And then when you get out the other end, you realize that the thing that you were so afraid All right, of sleep well. didn't seem as big as it did before, if that makes any sense. If anything, getting through anxiety has helped me more dealing with my anxiety than worrying about my anxiety. Um, I don't know what you said, Ian. Sorry, I went away. But I was going to say, it's too, okay. yeah, if you're speaking of doctors, don't be afraid. Because, I mean, I didn't... I was living in Japan when I hit my breaking point for anxiety. And I finally saw a doctor. And I actually got medication. And it literally changed me for the better. Like, So don't feel shame if you have to get medication or talk to someone. Because there could be a chance you might need it and, and that's another, zero that, shame in it i'm glad you brought the, exactly i'm glad you brought that up because there's a reason why i'm so open about whatever i'm going through on twitter or instagram or whatever because this country especially has such a stigma when it comes to mental health that it's such a un it's like a taboo it's like a right a weakness that's not fair and, and nobody talks about it and it, we need to because it's something that can be fixed and, ad and, and and addressed and worked on. Maybe not fixed exactly, but it's something that so many people go through, but so many people are afraid or ashamed or don't understand it or don't. They're they're anxious to talk about it. And yeah, especially when you have other people who don't deal with the problem saying, oh, it's all in your head. You're fine. You're overreacting. And then it makes you start to question yourself, like, am I when you're. You have a literal chemical imbalance. It's the same thing too. My therapist even said like, would you ever shame a diabetic for taking their insulin or a cancer patient for taking whatever medication they need? No, of course not. And it's like, so why are you even like feeling shame that you need like sertraline to get your serotonin levels up and stuff? You know what I mean? And it's like, you're right. I would never shame someone for doing that. So it's just silly. But yeah, like Garen said, there's a weird stigma where it's, people think we can just blink our eyes and we're fine it's the society, when we have a physical problem yeah it, it look to the breakfast club remember that scene in the breakfast club where um andrew the wrestler emilio estevez talks about his dad and how his dad was like you have to win you have to win you have to do this you have to be perfect that's how it is 
for everybody. Everybody has that voice, whether it's an external voice or an internal voice saying, you cannot be anything. Oh, here comes the, okay, we're kicking up the music a little bit. You can't be anything but perfect. It's not, if you're not normal, then you don't matter. If you're not normal, then what's what, what's the point? And that's just not true because nobody is normal. Nobody is. That does that word is not a word. It doesn't. It's in. Yeah, how fucking really boring would life be? No, exactly. Welcome in, Christian. So. I'm sorry if I missed some of what you said. I, I was relating to the Breakfast Club, house. which everybody should do. But you can't live or, or, or experience things the way you think you're supposed to or the way you think you have to. You can only do it the way you can do it. So if you... I mean, anxiety is, is, is... It fucking sucks and it's annoying. But you can work through it. I've been looking for a therapist since last year and I haven't been able to find one. And part of that is anxiety. Part of that is like, well, they said to call later and I called later and they haven't called me back. So I'm just waiting for them to call me back. So I yeah, and don't same. be feel bad too if you finally do it and you find one and it's not right for you. They mm -hmm. understand too, like you've got to find the right doctor for you. Don't force yourself to stay with one just because you feel obligated. Like if you're not comfortable with the person, get a new one. And you don't know what anybody else is going through. Like, I didn't know Kyle had anxiety or anything like that growing up. I was basically jealous of his life growing up. He had all the friends. He had all the whatever. I hadn't, I didn't have any of that. I mean, I had some friends, but I never felt like I had a, a group the way that he did. But this entire time he was going through that entire, that exact same thing that I, I was. Yeah, and it hits you different ways. Like, Garen's had it too. I just thought he was an angry child, but like, I couldn't even eat at a restaurant. And as soon as we left, I'd be chowing down in the car. Like, I physically couldn't swallow for a while. Like, it hits me in school. I had such a hard time in school since third grade. I'd have random panic attacks. Like, I've suffered with it forever. But yeah, a lot of it too, especially growing up earlier, there was even more shame. And it's like, you don't want to admit to it because you feel broken and like an embarrassment to your family or something, which is so dumb now in retrospect. I think that's a little symbol of the age we grew up in, though. Mm-hmm. I mean, yeah. I mean, growing up... Growing up and struggling with, with identity and, and being gay and, and hearing these microaggressions that people say and do, and they don't even oftentimes realize what they're doing. But... It... it, it, it it wreaks havoc because like I haven't been to a doctor in three years because my mom didn't try to help me get a doctor and when she passed that didn't help yeah you just gotta take you just gotta find the strength to do it I thought that was Garen talking for himself no nope. I did too I was like that was I got really weird really I'm like confused. um oh no I'm reading didn't what segue that at all. I'm sorry I'm reading what Adam said in the chat I'm like so <laughs> I am adopted something. question mark <laughs> I was like he is pretty salty about that for it just happening yeah you just you have to find if you want it and you want to address it then you can do it there's tools there's people you can talk to there's i mean you can you just have to you just have to get the the, the gumption to say okay i'm gonna do it it's okay that i need to do it it's even yeah. better that i want to do it and then you just go and you do it and it's easier and said than done that but, you guys face what? but i had a huge problem when i first saw a therapist where i was fighting with myself like against the treatment Mm -hmm. Like, I almost thought, like, they were trying to trick me or I was too intelligent to fall for their tricks. 
and it kind of sabotaged me a little bit. So I would say go into it with a more open mind than s some people tend to. Yeah, I actually had the difficulty because that's what I studied for the second half of college. So I like knew all their procedures. So I was kind of like, mm-hmm, let's fast forward. Like I was kind of almost arrogant about it. Like, let's get out yeah. of it. And then once I could peel back that educational background, it was like, okay. But I had to see like three people anyway, so. I mean, Kyle and I grew up with a dad who, he loved us very, very much, but, and, and I'm just- And speak, we didn't even really grow up together either. He grew up with dad, I grew up with mom. Yeah. But- Pretty early on. I, and I, I can't speak for you. I mean, I think you have the similar feeling, but I felt like, yes, our dad loved us, but at the same time, we were not, uh, top of the list no 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 for sure his priorities were a little bit skewed and i and i too like yeah i was jealous of you because i'm like every time how many weekends did i get canceled on i'm like well garen's fucking with him all the time i never get to see him because of baseball or whatever you know yeah so i was envious that you got to see him and i never did but uh, but yeah he he all he, ask ian or even jake knows like dad canceled I'd meet him, I'd literally go to a restaurant on my birthday. And this is even like recently, like my 36th birthday, I think. I'm at the restaurant, sat at the table, and then he calls, yeah, the pool team called me and they need me. It's my fucking birthday, I'm at a restaurant alone looking like a dickhole. I'm like, okay, see and you the next funny thing year. Is, the funny thing is, Kyle, I didn't see him that often because I was just always in my room. Well, right. It's like, I don't, I was in my room on the internet. Or watching a movie or whatever like alone that's that's my right. that's what i did i would isolate myself lock myself away in a room because i didn't know what else to do with <laughs> myself i didn't know how to be a person because i didn't know who i was i still don't know who i am to be honest right so oh, yeah, i still can't figure it out yeah it's like well and it's and to have the, the the memories that stand out be something like in a car after somebody makes a joke being told that if somebody ever says they're going to take you to a gay bar again, I'm going to break their fucking neck or rip their fucking head off or whatever it was he said. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I'm like, what? Seeing our family ban our cousin Lisa for bringing your girlfriend when you're 16 and it's, it scars you forever. Yeah. And a, and a family prayer. Yeah. Everyone in a circle holding hands. My aunt praying to God to help Kosovo. Or my grandma praying to God to help Kosovo. Weeping. And then my aunt in the next breath saying, by the way, all you gay people are going to go fucking straight to hell. Yep. I'm paraphrasing, but if you don't find Jesus, you're going to burn in hell or whatever it was she said. It's like, mm-hmm. And that was before, I think that was before we knew about each other, right, Kyle? Yeah, because I, I mean, I didn't find out, Kim found out about you before me, so. How did Kim find out about it? She said you told her on a, a, uh, AOL Instant Messenger or whatever. You guys used to talk about it. I don't remember that. I don't remember yeah, that I don't at all. Know. She said she knew way before us. I don't even know how you found out. Can you I wait. found out through mom outing you because you outed yourself on the phone or something. But I thought you knew already at that point because you were with Jason and I at our apartment when that happened. I know, but the first time Kim and I visited you, you guys were still roommates. And that's when Kim apparently knew about you still. Well, we were never roommates. We were always a couple. Well, well no, I know. But, that's why I literally, oh, not oh, that oh, people oh. could see me, I air quoted roommates. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah. And then, yeah, I during that transition it was a in Vegas. Outing. Or was that you, Kyle? No, I had email, Mom. No, I meant, I thought someone saw something on a computer. No, Garen used to see websites that I'd leave up all the time and threaten me. He'd send me messages, oh, I know, <laughs> I'm gonna tell Mom. I'm like, oh, I don't know what you're talking about. I know, I, on the computer I saw. And then I'm like, he's like, you know what you had up last? And I'm like, game spot? But it was really like gay spot or something. And I just said game No, spot? I what? saw Video you game? writing a letter to XY Magazine. 
Oh, I don't know about that. An one. email. I never heard. Wait, 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 wait. We're going to story time. I never heard a story about Kyle writing X Y magazine. I don't know, but in New Mexico, he would linger over, over my shoulder, and then that's when I know I was at some gay website and Garen. I know she's gonna. I, she's gonna know. I'm gonna tell her. And I'm like, hello. But inside, <laughs> I was like, my pits were flooding. I was having a palpitation. <laughs> like shit. What did I leave up? What did I leave up? I want to hear more about XY, Kyle. I honestly don't remember writing a letter to them. I mean, I may have. I know. Or I maybe I saw. Before. Maybe it was the. Maybe I saw the web address and thought it was an email. I thought you were sending them a letter, like, "Dear X, no, 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 my brother is no, terrorizing me." Oh yeah, help me. me. <laughs> oh yeah, help. He knows. Oh, help, he knows. Because I loved X Y Magazine. I was I was looking at that as much as I could. Oh yeah, me too. But it was terrifying back in the day of going to a website and the pictures would load from top to the bottom, side to side, like. Like a printer or whatever. That computer at mom's house in in on Chipman tackles. No, the one with, with the, the big, big living room? room. Yeah, that's Chipman. Fifty two fifty two Chipman Drive. Yeah, that computer had to be riddled with gay porn in the history. Oh yeah. Oh for sure. I don't know if you could put WWW without the next word immediately popping up as gay or queer or... I or know, uh, it's not. Or... Welcome back, queer. Yeah. <laughs> Here are your recent favorites. <laughs> Welcome back, I never queer. cleared that history. <laughs> no, how I didn't know how. did you guys get away with it that long? Did your mom never use her computer? Oh, no, she's been technologically... She hasn't been able to do any of that. Oh, my god. And goodness. clearly You're I lucky. didn't either. I know, Kyle. They're going to all know. Oh my god, I, demon, go away, story, Kyle, demon, please. Caught I, looking at a side by my dad and he threw a chair and yes. it hit off the ceiling fan and hit my stepmom. Uh, what? And then I blamed it on my brother and he still to this day is in trouble for it. I hope you're not watching. And sadly, that was like seven years ago. It was not seven years ago. It was recent. Kyle, I was 16 or 15. No, Ian, that was Kyle, like in your I was 20s. working at a McDonald's at my dad's. You worked at the uh, grocery store. No. Yeah. I, this was a long time ago. This was literally post high school. It was not. Ian, yes, it was. It was not. It was a lot more recent than you're remembering. <laughs> I don't think it was that recent. Mm -hmm. Seven years ago, Kyle. I don't think you realize how old we are. You probably were 30. He was fucking having a heart attack. I would never have on a computer. There's no way. Wait, what was he? Not seven what was years he? Ago. What was the site that he was so mad about? I don't even remember. It was some. I don't know. It was, uh, obviously it was a porn site. But what? I mean, it was straight. So no, what? Kyle. It, yeah, but my dad was like the audacity because he's super, got young girls and oh, he just you no, know, Kyle. Because my dad was still working as a cab driver. This was forever ago. You're thinking of a different story, I think. No, I'm thinking the one where you threw your stepbrother under the bus and let it happen. Oh, I did. He, my dad took us outside and made us sit on a trampoline and said, I don't give a fuck who did it. You're going to fight it out and one's going to admit it and that's going to be the end of it. So we just sat there on a trampoline staring at each other going, did you do it? No, did you? No. And that was mm -hmm. the end. And we sat there for like six hours. Should have blamed yourself. Garen, clip this, Ian's admission, and send yeah, it to no. your dad. <laughs> I'm giving too much to your audience. <laughs> Ian, the tagline is your secret safe with us. Yeah. Yeah. It's oh, the overnight oh. hours. Just kidding, <laughs> Father Bird. Kidding. Except for the clip that goes live. That'll be the like the trailer. Yeah, I threw my stepbrother under the bus when I was jacking up the porn in my dad's house. First off, I was never admitted to that. No admission never happened. Mm -hmm. So, awkward silence. What's next? What's the next question? Uh, shaking your head. Let's see if we have any other questions. I remember once when we were at uh, Tackles and Mom was dating Kyron. I think you guys remember him. This is the one yeah. she got in the accident with. But remember the show? Well, obviously, Garen, you remember it, Queer as Folk or whatever. I remember that. Yeah, they were watching it downstairs, and Kyron came up to Mom's room for a minute. And then Mom came upstairs, and, and I was watching, like, one of those weird MTV shows. I don't even know. She's like, what are you doing? What are you watching? Why are you watching that same show we are down there? I go, what are you talking about? She goes, Kyron said you're watching the same show down there. Why are you watching it? I'm like, I'm watching MTV, da-da-da-da-da. She goes, oh. 
And then it, she kind of dropped it, but it was weird because I had wanted to watch it and he thought I was watching the same show and then told her. So I was like, Ooh, but I wasn't. I don't think I remember Kyron. Did I ever meet him? I, I, I don't I know. Probably, because she dated him for a little bit. <clears throat> but it was annoying and terrifying because I wasn't watching even though I wanted to. And I, I used to sneak watch it but that particular instance, I wasn't. And he was like, mom came up there. She's like, why are you watching what we're watching? I was like, oh, I'm not. But I was so terrifying. Like, oh my God, she's gonna know. Hmm. Weird. I made Ian guess for like four hours straight. Oh my God. You hear that story, Garen? No. When I first came out. To we him. went, who was that, Carol's? Yeah, Aunt Carol's house in Bloomfield we were Hills. house sitting for Carol and he made me guess an entire weekend even though I knew the answer and I was afraid to say it so I would just guess ridiculous shit and he'd go yeah and he just wouldn't tell me get yeah, wait I guess like what what but I mean, like I said I had something to tell you but I I'm I'm nervous it's like it's bad I just I don't know you're gonna hate me and then he's like did you kill someone did you rob did you steal did you do this and then finally like after like two hours he goes are you gay do you like guys and I'm like no, 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 no. And then he literally guessed again for another two hours. And then I go, it's something you already said. It's it, it's true. And I killed him the whole time, but I was, was afraid like, to bring it yeah. up. Because like, after a while, if I keep bringing it up and you're not, yeah. that's a little weird. But he screamed. He was so happy because this whole time he thought I was like a saint that didn't like anybody. It wasn't even a saint. You were just like an asexual plant. Yeah. I'd be like, is she hot? And you're like, eh. Mm -hmm. Is he hot? Eh. Is it uh, eh? And by it, I mean like a plant or a vegetable or a yeah. vacuum cleaner. That eggplant looks so good. Unless it was, what's her face? Jennifer Love Hewitt, he had no opinion. That's my beard. So, I was excited as hell when he told me. I kept flipping through cable stations going, is he hot? Is he yep. hot? Is he hot? And we did it for like the entire night. Mm hmm I knew before Kim, just saying. True. I kind of just I regret. Here, no, I, you catch you I honestly do regret that we didn't have that knowledge for each other earlier on. I think that would have completely changed the way our relationship. Oh, was. I know. And I, to be honest, as soon as I found out about you, I went into a deep shell because hearing Dad like the hot hung hunks thing. Oh, that's, that's actually so, the first so time that I it was like, what? No way! Because I literally, I swear to God, I thought I thought you were asexual, wanted nothing, hated the world. Mm -hmm. The only clue you ever had was Katie Holmes, but I just knew you were so into acting and all that shit. You just had random posters up. But once I found out and heard them, that was a similar thing. Danny, you go down there and you make sure, I don't know who's changing my boy. I'm like, oh, fuck, I, I can't be gay. Dad can't even handle one. If both of his only baby boys are gay, it's over. I yeah, wait, be, you never, I, I never knew someone. all that that happened. Oh, huh? yeah, they want to not, Cindy's like, all right, well, What's start the start from the beginning. What? Start from the beginning. Tell the whole thing. I was I don't, it's no at, secrets. It's fine. I don't care. I was at that. Dad and Cindy's. Or yeah, I was living there at the time, and then Cindy's finally like. I was back. I was already Garen? here. I was in California. Yeah, yeah, you were in California. I okay. go no, and then uh, she's like, "Well, he got a newsletter, and your dad's not too happy." But I go, "Okay, watch." And then she said, "Ha ha hunks," and I literally burst out laughing. I'm like, "Okay." Oh no! First she goes Triple H. I'm like the wrestler. <laughs> and then she's like, what? And then she said it was hot hung hunks. And I started shitting myself laughing. I'm like, no, okay, no way. And she goes, yeah, here it is. Here's his name. And I called him and he denied it up and down. Well, first she said you stayed silent. She goes, that was a dead giveaway. And then he goes, um, yeah, I gave my, my, pre my credit card. He must've been pranking. He put my name on it. He, he just, it, he did it as a joke. I don't know. And she's like, Garen, you can tell me. And then you just apparently just denied it. Yada, yada, yada. And then Danny was over and she's like, Danny, Izzy, you were living with him. And he was kind of, cause I guess Danny, you had pretty much almost told Danny, right? He I said you were kind of like, said you were bi. I think he said, you told him. He's like, cause Garen, are you gay? Are you gay? And you finally said, I don't know. I'm bi, like both. Okay. Okay. I'll continue and I will give you my end of the story. That's what he's saying now. Like when he rehashes it, he said that you never really said it. 
Okay. And he didn't quite say that. He didn't actually out you then. Mm -hmm. He just said, I don't know. I have my suspicions. But Jerry, I mean, I, I'll, I'll go and I'll try to figure it out. I don't know. He's like, yeah. And then he said the same thing. If he's being taken out or manipulated, you need to find that out. I will pop off and, mm -hmm. you know, dad, blah, 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 puffing his chest. And I'm like, oh, my God, Jesus. Because I, obviously I knew I was gay then. No one else did. I'm like, I can never out myself. It's over. Dad will fucking kill himself, kill me. He's freaking out. So that fucked me up bad. Yeah. Because even if they're, like, cool with it, it, it does... Well, it doesn't suck, but I can get how to them it does suck having your only two boys to traditionally carry off the name are gay. Like, mm -hmm. you know, they can't understand old option, all that shit. So I was just panicked and conditioned at that point. But anyway, so, yeah, Danny came over and they were all grilling him. Like, is he gay? Da, 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 you got to find out. He's like, I honestly don't know. He's just, he's, you know, Garen, he's secluded. So he was kind of protecting you because I didn't know till years later that apparently... He did grill you a few times because he was concerned with you going out at like, he said you'd leave at midnight, have no fucking clue where you went. And then eventually when he confronted you, he said, you were like, I don't know, leave me alone. I don't know. I like both. What does it matter? Da, 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 da. Just being your normal right, internal self. But then he kind of knew Jason. Jason, he's just like manipulating you and he was an asshole and you guys took advantage of him. You know, that whole side of the story, yada, 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 yada. So, but I didn't learn that till later. So he didn't flat out say that to dad or Cindy, which I guess that was kind of cool. Yeah. But he was just playing, I don't know. But again, so you can fill us in there because I didn't even know that you allegedly came out as quote by until recently, the past few years mm -hmm. through, through Danny. So, but yeah, I, so that's on you for that end. Cause I don't know. Is that all that happened? Yeah, 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 yeah. From there, I, I, she just said she talked to you. You played silent. She was convinced she knew for sure you were gay at that moment. Okay. And I was still in denial. I'm like, there's no way. Because, I mean, I just saw you, like I said, as a mean, mean, horrible, devoid of human contact, emotion, <laughs> Satan. Because remember, you used to rip my hair out, show me in Target with a double mirror, and then teasing me about me being gay without me even really knowing what you're teasing me about. Like, so I was like, there's no way, there's no way he's gay. Fuck, Cause you didn't like... show any traditional signs of it, except, well now, I mean, they're more obviously, yeah, cause internalized anger is a sign that someone's struggling with sexuality and stuff. But yeah, I, I was floored hearing that. I'm like, there's no way, there's no fucking way. And maybe I was extra, like I said, because I'm like, there's no way they have two gay kids. There's no fucking way. Uh, um, anyway. All right. Well, here's the thing. And dad never talked to me about it. I wasn't even supposed to know about you. Like, mm -hmm. dad swore Cindy, but you know, Cindy, she's like, Kyle, what's this Triple H? I'm like, I only know of the wrestler. I don't know. I. What do you mean? And then they went from there. So. And that was basically it. Okay, so I'm going to go back to when I first got a credit card. I bought so much porn with that credit card that I don't even know. Gay porn? Yeah. Oh, wow. So I had a subscription to Playgirl.com. I had... Playgirl. Bought... <laughs> yeah, it was terrible. <laughs> I had dozens of porn tapes probably not done like a lot like 12 or 13 probably but you know my room where the closet is yeah you know like where the drawers were on the bottom yeah if you pull those drawers out it was full of porn underneath the drawers like in underneath behind the closet it. behind it it was full of yeah porn. okay 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 i did remember you're like because you put your toys in there you're like don't touch my action figures don't go near them but that wasn't that was before that wasn't it I, well, I mean, it was, you were, I'm sure you had it at 18, right? Yeah. Yeah, so. So, one day I got so fucking paranoid that I threw them all away. Oh. Like I, did, why, did someone almost catch you? No, I just was like, I can't, this is too, I'm too freaked out. I, I don't know if right. something happened that made me think that, or I don't remember, but I just threw it all away. Okay. Um, in a trash bag, just on the end of the road. <laughs> <laughs> on the end of the road at the, at the end of the driveway someone got a garbage bag of delights yeah yeah or right, no it would have been funny if he put it out for oh, next to our trash so it's yeah, possible right. that because of that 
uh, something like a catalog or whatever it was showed up, but I don't know yeah. why it would have happened years later. Maybe they wanted you back. Or revisited. That's possible. But, honest to God, I think the reason I said it was a prank is because the way that she said the name was on the label is a way that a friend of mine, not even a real friend of mine, someone I knew in school used to say my name, used to spell my name or something. So that was tr- as, far, as far as I understand it, that was true. Do you know what I mean? I yeah. I did not request it. I did not ask for it. And that name, coincidentally enough, was the same way that a friend of mine misspelled my name before. So, from my end, that was a true story. So I I I, I don't have any other explanation aside from if it was either my friend who did it or they just sent it to me. Like as a come back, as a, we have a good deal. Yeah, you've spent six hundred dollars on porn with us before. <laughs> also, I bought a lot of Bellamy, and I don't so I don't know what Hot Hunk Hunks was. Bellamy. Be- yeah, they're a, it's like a foreign. It's like sounds French. From Prague or something. Prague. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think Scott lived there. But Prague? I think he was overseas for a while. Really? Mm-hmm. What a cultured lad. I know. Um, so in terms of, of when I was out here so and I also don't know where this taking advantage of me stuff came from that wasn't really actually accurate but I used to sneak out of the apartment and walk to Jason's house yeah yeah, that was true that's 100% true and Danny confronted me on it once and I was like I don't know maybe I'm bi I don't, I don't know okay so that did actually happen so yeah that did that did happen Okay, wow. Because at yeah, the end of the day, I'm not a good liar. So I, I couldn't say. And he said he said all the stuff like, Garen, I don't care what you do. I just want to know. You're yeah. my cousin. Like, yeah, no, that's true. He, he did he say nice that. About it. He goes, I don't care what you are. I just need to know, like, what's going on. Yeah. But yeah, I would go to. And knowing what I know now, I never should have done that because I was walking through a bad neighborhood. Bad neighborhood yeah. like i could have been murdered at any second but yeah i would i would sneak out and go to his house because he didn't live that far away it was like a mile or two a mile and he a half wouldn't pick you up that's so mean i don't think he had a car at that no time. he oh. didn't because remember we heard the story of garen and jason total my car oh yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so that's true that that stuff is true but okay well yeah that's cool of him then he never flat out told him well he said he was by so he just kept saying i don't know yeah. What was this thing? When did you actually know that you were gay? Um. I don't know. Hey, Vic. I know for sure in seventh grade, I was attracted to the guys in that, in, so, like in gym class when they were when I saw the guys wearing shorts, uh-huh. I was always like, oh, <laughs> like seeing guys' oh. legs, like uh, like their calves or whatever, always turned like it, it was like that was it. And I was like, okay, oh shit, okay, this is interesting. Did you know <laughs> what that was? Like, did you even know? Like, cause what's weird for me, like I didn't really even know like what gay was literally probably until like 12 or 13 like i didn't know that it was like a i didn't really know i was broken until that moment i guess like because i've literally known i've been attracted to guys since as early and i know that sounds really weird but like kindergarten literally and i used to do stuff i remember at garfield elementary uh, me and this kid gordon we'd have reading time in one of the classes and we'd touch each other behind the bookshelves there what like yes swear to god no, it, this was in, I think, second grade that that started happening. Even that is... Yeah, I know, literally. And I had no clue until I was like 10 or 12 that it was like, I just My knew I liked so boys. Bad, but I knew I liked boys and I had that age. no clue. It was, I mean, we didn't, we weren't sucking. We were just like kind of hitting <laughs> each other. Mean, but it was weird. But yeah, that's what I mean. So I've literally known since I was fucking like in uh, kindergarten. And Here's the truth, and I'm gonna say this to you. Grade. I'm gonna tell you guys this and tell the world this. What? I don't have very much memory of my childhood. 
of my youth. Like I have, mm -hmm. I've got moments. And one of the moments is the teacher saying that I had a learning disability and I would never write without a computer. I have moments of like Karen ripping my glasses off and breaking them. Or Danny and I getting... <laughs> That's because you saw the devil that day. Danny and I getting yelled at by Cindy's brother. Oh, yeah. Um, For breaking Rachel's lamp. Yeah. But I, I don't... There's so much that I don't remember. And I have this Do you weird... remember stepping on my hair? At yes, I remember and that. And ripping it off with your foot? Yeah, I okay. remember that. Um, and I didn't intend that. That wasn't supposed to happen. I just... Uh, uh, well, I you took pride in that target to show me the repercussions of it. Well, because I, apparently I was a cunt when I was a kid. Yeah, Part that's of my friend. the understatement of the year. But there was got to be a reason for that. And I don't know what it is. I mean, you said it yourself, I think. You were very secluded. You were very... You had a hard time meeting new people, so maybe that made you... But there was a moment... Well, this was before he left. That that was, like, near the catalyst yeah, of him but I think was... mom going, I can't deal with him because he used to take his literal shoes and clothes and throw them at mom. I'm not going to school and attack her and throw shit. And then eventually she's <laughs> I like, Gary, that. I can't. I can't. Yeah, so we literally... It, we, it was like, I think you were... When did you go to dad's? high school wasn't it right before like maybe it was that summer I don't know I swore it was earlier than that because I thought you went to Frost I did but I also went to I went to Wild Lake Western so I don't because we lived no maybe I went to no because we lived in Plymouth Road so I would have gone to Frost then I think and then I went, then we moved to Wald Lake or wherever, and I went to Wald Lake Middle School. And then I went to Frost, or not, and then I went to Western, and then I went to Churchill. Yeah. So that was. Maybe they kept you, because maybe you stayed of, in Western and they commuted. I don't know. No, I don't but think yeah. so. See, that's the thing, I don't remember. But yeah, I have this weird recurring too. memory that I thought, or that I thought was a dream of being carried down a hallway. At, like, and I think it's, it's Nana's old house. Like, and I always thought it was a dream that I was carrying somebody, but I think in reality, it was a dream of me being carried. And I don't know what the rest of the memory is. Honestly, I don't know. But, I don't know. The only time I remember you being carried was at a Diane's house by Mike. No, no, it wasn't like that. It wasn't. Oh. It was. I, it, I would have been very young. Like. Oh. I'm talking six or seven or even. Younger. Oh, you're just talking about one of your fragmented. Memories. Yeah, it's just a. It's just a fragment that I thought I was always a dream, that. but I don't. I don't even know what it means. I don't know. I. I just don't know why I have such a. A, a, a weird lack of memory. Yeah. And oh, I'm the why same way. Like... I suddenly just because I remember being a kid who would jump up and do it, like impressions or like I would bust out a Jay Leno impression or I would bust out a, a, a you know a, a stereotypical 7-Eleven Arabic voice or whatever and then one day that all stopped and I just got cloudy and I got angry yeah. and I got scared and dark and I, I don't know why, honestly, I don't know why. And to this day, it, 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 it haunts me as to why I turned, like why as a fourth grade did I start crying in, in school because I didn't want to go to school? Yeah, I or, don't know. Were you being bullied? No, no, not to my memory. Like, I don't think I ever really had an issue with bullies. I don't think anybody would have dared bullied Garen. I mean, the most bullying thing I really remember is somebody being like, are you a devil worshiper? Because I was right. And this was at Western because I was drawing a, a, a cover to a story with a monster coming out of a like a claw coming out of a dark cave or something, mm -hmm. which I still have. No, you're like, yeah. But like, yeah, I, I to don't... this day don't understand memory issues. Like, m most of my childhood, I wouldn't know if Kyle didn't tell me. 
Like all these memories, I don't. I know, and that's one thing I've always had is a really good memory. But yeah, that's when Garen was like, "Yeah, when we didn't even know." I'm like, "I've literally known I've been gay since fucking elementary or yeah, elementary school." I know there was one point when you and me and Kristen. Do you remember Kristen? Kristen from behind Dad's house. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. We were playing something at the church parking lot, and I kissed her head. Like, uh-huh. I was playing dad or mom or something, and I was like, okay, yeah. have a good day. And I like, kissed her head, and then when I came home, they're like, oh, you kissed Kristen? Oh, you're so... And it, like, uh-huh. mortified me. I was like, ew, no, uh, uh what? <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. But, no, I don't... I mean, I... My first memory of, 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 of attraction was... Seventh uh, grade. Seventh grade. Seventh grade calves. Yeah, it was... <laughs> At Frost, it was like Craig. His name was Craig. I remember. I was like, oh. Mine was Gordon, so. <laughs> At Craig and Gordon. Garfield <laughs> Garfield Elementary. Good old Garfield. Yep. Yep. Garfield Elementary. Yeah, the things that happen behind the bushes during reading time. But I never had those experiences. Hide your sons, Gar- Garfield. Yeah, that, but th- that's when it gets scary because, yeah, you think you're normal and not broken. And because, oh, and that's what I was saying. Our family never really... Like, it blows my mind that there's these families, obviously, till we started having the prayers about it directly when it's out in the open. But we never grew up with, oh, fags, this, homosexuality is bad. Like, I didn't even, like, literally, I was ignorant to it. I never understood those households that were like, fuck queers, fuck fat. Like, I, we just never grew up like that. Like, mom never said it. And I think she even had that one gay friend, like... And I didn't even think about it. Like, I didn't really know, even hearing the word gay, I didn't even know what that meant. Like, I was literally clueless about it. So I remember one time... On TV, it was one of those religious things. I don't know if it was a show, but like, yeah. People who like, like guys who like guys, they're sinners, they're going to hell. And I remember, uh uh-oh. And that's around the time, like, in high school, Ian, that's why, you know, started dating Lindsay. And you pretend, Mm because you're like, I've got to fix myself. As incredible as a person as she is, you try so hard. That's when you realize, like, oh, my God, I'm broken. I can't be like this. It's terrifying. I don't know if I ever told you this, but... uh... My only ex- see, you're right, because I mean, I didn't grow up either with a household, even though I wasn't gay. But I never grew up hearing like gay is necessarily a problem. Right. But my, um, I had an older cousin named Danny, ironically enough, but he was gay, and he actually died of AIDS, which was real sad. Mm-hmm. And my, you know, my aunt's super religious and all this stuff, but never heard a bad word about him though. But I guess, you know, that whole stereotype back then about AIDS being like you know, some sort of punishment from God or I didn't even right. hear any of that until after that. I was like, what? But that was my only experience with it, to be honest, as a child. Yeah, Vic. Yeah, that's I... what's so sad. These people grow up like that, hearing such negative. I'm like, well, the one thing that's kind of reassuring, unless things go really backwards, is I feel like you guys might be. I feel like I feel like at our age group, we were at the cusp of like ignorance to a little bit closer to exception but like i think nowadays growing up is not going to invalidate how hard it is growing up no matter what age but it is something that's talked about more and it is something addressed more and it is something that's somewhat accepted more in public and that's reassuring to me for the youth coming up compared to when like you guys were younger Unfortunately, it's still two steps forward and one step back oh, of course. because all these people that are already like taking away trans rights and they, we can still be, you know, evicted in Michigan for being gay. Like, there's still a long way to go. But mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, definitely can't argue that things are better. But yeah, unfortunately, there are still, and it probably always will be. It's just like the thing of racism that will never go away. Certain people are prejudiced that will never go away. Like, your aunt will never approve of gay people. You know what I mean? Like, there's yeah. some people who are just so set in their ways. Unfortunately. But that di- that runs deep because Grandpa was racist as fuck. Oh, I know. And Dad has said some really f- questionable stuff to me. Right. And I don't think Dad is racist, but I definitely think he's got prejudices that he grew up with. Right. Like he once he told me I was we were gonna go see Janet Jackson or whatever, and he's like, "You gotta be careful. They get r- rowdy when they're in groups." Uh huh. Or something, <laughs> and I'm like, "What?" Sadly, with that sense, I don't know who they means by they. There's a couple groups. <laughs> he means the race group. Ian. Yeah. Oh, literally, I thought with Janet and that target oh, demographic. No. I no. thought maybe something else. 
No. Okay. Which is weird because I don't even see that memory doesn't doesn't track with him knowing about me yet. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And I would have never. Well, did seen... you go to Janet with Jason? Yeah, we saw Janet when we came to Michigan. Yeah. But I feel like maybe there was, was something else yet? I went to see that he would have said that. But what else would it have been? I don't was know. Was this during the Epic Comedy Casino show? trip, Kyle? No. No, it was something at, at... I think it was something at Joe Lewis, maybe. I don't know. It doesn't matter. He said it. <laughs> <laughs> but my dad, he's not... I don't think he's racist by any means. He No. He, but... Yeah, it's a people is, person, but there's, there's some ignorance in there's there. There's definitely a prejudice that still exists, even if you, that's what systemic means. Right? Well, I do think that the quicker everyone realizes that they have some prejudice behaviors, the faster you can try to take care of the problem as a whole. I think people's denial, even myself, I can't ever pretend that there's never been a quote prejudice bone in my body. Like whether it's walking down a bad neighborhood and things or seeing someone walk down the street and having a wrong impression in my mind like everyone needs to accept the fact that there's been some prejudice somewhere in their life and the faster that you can accept that and try to see where it stemmed from and try to correct it the right. quicker we can all try to go down the right path yeah i think denial is the biggest problem because for some reason when it comes to like people in a i'll use okay i'm going to use white people for an example people in a power position for some reason, if you accept that your group of people has a problem, you somehow are admitting that you are the problem and they refuse to do that. So it's like, as long as people in power can't accept that there's a problem, mm. it will never be fixed. Yeah, that sucks. It just drives me yeah, insane. Yeah, our stepdad's super racist. People. Adam, super racist. Who? Glenn. Oh, goodness. Yeah. Big payback. Weren't you guys in Christian school? I went to Plymouth Christian Academy for a couple of years me, until we couldn't afford me too. it anymore. Yep. You know you guys went to that? Yep. yep. Oh, God. And we went to so many schools. It's stupid. I know you went to a lot of schools. I didn't know you were in a private school. Plymouth Christian Academy, baby. Mm -hmm. I remember Mrs. Hubbermail. I think, Garen, you had her, too. Yeah. Mrs. Hubbermail. That's when, that is when I started freaking out about going to school. Oh, was it? Yeah, that makes because sense, it then. was fourth. I was at fourth grade. I w it was in the other building when fourth grade started. Um, and I would go into that class, and there were times when I would just go in there and I would bawl my eyes out. I would be sobbing because I didn't want to be there. And I, why? Like, where did that come from? Well, maybe you knew more about yourself then, and the stuff they talked about. I don't know, because I don't remember there actually being that overt of a. No, it wasn't. It was. It, it really didn't feel any different from like Garfield or. or oh, okay. Question. Oaks has an important question. Are you Christian or Jewish? <laughs> uh, I'm neither. Oaks. Spiritual. I don't subscribe to organized religion. I think it's a detriment to this world. Well, I think religion had a place when things were less uh, known and civilization was a tool to oppress people that's the whole reason the bible was oh, created that. but that's not what today's topic's about um oaks actually sent us an email let's look at oaks she wanted me to read the email sure. she sent us Holy and i'm sure we'll get back to our gay youths because <laughs> <laughs> that actually is there. very interesting to me is how because kyle and i grew up in the same house for a long time but we had both had completely different Paths. Although it actually, at the end of the day, it doesn't sound like it was all that different. It was uh, an unknown path. You somehow dodged each other. Yeah, we just tell. We just are coping. With your browser history, though, I don't know how you guys dodged each other unless you guys just assumed each other porn was your own. Well, I P. Yeah, saw it, but some of them. But I denied it tooth you know, and nail. Did I go to Hot Hung Hunks today? Maybe I, I know. Did. Well, by eventually we had our own computers. Yeah. I just meant at your mom's. Did we ever... I don't think I ever showed you anything. Why would I do that? <laughs> you guys are really close. Uh, hi, Garen. It's Oaks from Michigan. I was wondering if you have any advices you would give for my future self. So you want advice for your future self, Oaks, or for our future selves? 
Yeah, anything you want to share, we're open for sure. I would say just don't ever lose value in yourself and don't ever feel like you need to change who you are for somebody else. You as a person are important. You as a person have value and no matter who you are or who anybody is, they have an impact to somebody. So no one, nobody is invaluable or that's not the right word. Nobody is without value. There you go. So just my, my advice is to just stay true to you and, and don't try to change yourself to fit into somebody else's box. That's, that's the best advice I could really give you because that's something I struggled with for a long time. Like I always pretended, well, I don't give a shit what anybody thinks about me. But at the same time, to this day, it's like, well, maybe if I dyed my hair pink, people would would respect me more as a gay person. Or maybe if I did this or did that, or, or I, I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have answers. I don't have, you know, there's no book. You just have to find yourself and find the people who care about you as yourself. I don't know if you guys have anything to add to that, but that's the best I can. No, I agree. Yeah. The biggest thing is, and I hate, I struggle with this too, because I'm so concerned with making other people happy. I, a lot of times forget about myself and you have, I have to, I still have to tell myself this. I've got to start putting myself first and not relying so much on what other people think or say to dissuade me from something that I feel in my gut that I should do or how I should act or whatever. You just, you gotta put yourself first. It's one of the hardest things I've found and that's what I would say is don't try to follow in a path of a past generation or your parents. I'm not saying don't listen to your parents. What I'm saying is uh, like when I grew up, I felt like there was a path I had to follow whether I thought it was right or not. And I feel some regret in that, that I let something else lead me away from what could make me happy. So I guess just be true to yourself, like he said, but also kind of find your passion and whatever that can be, if you're really passionate about it, don't let anyone stop you because everyone wants to force someone down a path that they think is correct because either they were conditioned that way or they feel it's safer. Um, but in the end, if you're not happy, what does it matter? You know, you got to do what makes you happy in the end. And follow that all the way to the end. Yeah. yeah. Damn, are you getting... Are you texting this in both or all chats, Adam? He I'm said, not seeing uh, it, so... He was saying that he's got a, a really terrible father. He said his dad was drunk 90, 99% of the time. He doesn't really want anything to do with him or his siblings, and he was extremely abusive towards him and his mother, and he threw scissors at him before. That's difficult. I, I mean, understand the mom side of that, definitely. I have yeah. a lot Is he of... still around? No, he... Your dad, dad passed away as well? No, he's alive still. He just doesn't talk to him anymore. Oh, well, I mean... Yeah, that's some of the hard uh, subject, too. Like, people think because they're family, like, they, they have to stick with them. No. And I, I don't agree with that. It's like we are perfectly capable of choosing our family, and no one should treat someone like that. Yeah. I've... It's, it's just not healthy. I've finally told my dad I don't want anything to do with my aunts I don't they don't need to know who I am they don't need to know that I'm alive they don't need to know the first thing about me because they're such horrible people and my dad doesn't see it that way because they're his sisters but I don't if you're the kind of person that's gonna post that trans people don't deserve rights or or you know whatever bullshit she was posting you do not exist to me anymore Okay. Hey, side note, Angie just jumped, or Oaks just jumped, and I think we misunderstood her question because she just said, "Hi, Ian. What advice would you give your future self?" No, she's asking that so, too. Oh, yeah. both. Okay. 
my future self would probably be similar to what I told you. Honestly, like I'm at this point where obviously we're a little bit older and I feel like I'm fighting this urge in my late thirties to like conform to what everyone around me thinks I should be as far as people in my age demographic or older. And that is something that just doesn't appeal to me. And the things I want to do, I feel maybe some people think are juvenile or childish, but if I take it appropriately, I feel like I can do something with it. So I'm trying to stay true to myself and what I need to be to be happy. Because honestly, following someone else's path or direction is making me absolutely miserable. So you just really got to ignore outside factors like what people other people are doing or what other people your age group are doing like what does it matter we're all different yeah the, the, that's the thing too like i wish to stop comparing myself to other people who are wildly successful around me and that is difficult to do but like ian said like i too like even the idea of streaming like i've been so dumb for lack of a better word to have not jumped on the streaming thing oh yeah video games have always been a passion and desire of mine like they've it, it, this is cheesy but too like because i was alone different than garen video games were li literally my friends they were my comics my action figures like i just dive into the world because it was different from my own like i i loved it they were my security blanket and it's like to have somehow steered away from that via college and all this stuff like shame on me but that's just because I was influenced so much about you need to oh, be yeah. doing this, you should do that. Japanese, oh, that's business. Do this, don't do that. Don't. And I'm like, you're right. And then you start living for other people who have already lived their lives, which is so unfair. Rather than, that's why I say, stick true to your gut. Do not listen to anybody else. I mean, take advice for sure, but don't do something because someone says you should do this and not that when you want to do the, the that. Like, I've made that, mis that mistake so many times and I regret it so much. And even still, I struggle. Like, I'm still so hesitant to stream. Like, even finalize it, get a camera, do all this. Like, I, there's part of me that's so reserved in fighting the idea. It's like an internal conflict, which is dumb because I know this is what I should be doing. But yeah. I still struggle with it, even though I am aware of how silly it is. It, that's, that's, those are still my anxieties and stuff. Like, I think they'll always be our enemy. And I'm still coping every day with, you know, how to handle it. I mean, that's... Oh, yeah, do not do stuff for other people. You just you just can't. Well, at least when you, it comes to your own life. Yeah, you and live you, your own life, and it's yours. Like that's The hardest part is the people it. around you that are telling you this genuinely are coming from a good place, which is the hardest part to deal with. They're trying to protect you. They're trying to keep you safe. But in the end safe isn't what makes everyone happy some people find a lot of happiness and safety and right making sure they're taken care of but for people like me and maybe kyle or even maybe garen who knows like working uh, the same nine to five job my whole life in a place that i was told to work because it's safe and secure while i'm wasting most of my life doing something i have no passion in that is my hell like if i believed in that that's where i would be sent is working a nine to five office job my entire life or my entire afterlife, I suppose. So you can't follow everyone else's path just because it's safe. They mean well. Thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah, and it works meaning, for them but... too. Exactly. It's Some people, people have that temperament. It's like, I'm not you. Like, I don't fall. And that's why, too, like, it stems back again to anxiety. People can't understand, like, well, I had it and I did this. And it's like, well, we're not the same person. It's so frustrating. And then they get mad at you, like, why can't you just do this? It's on your head. I did it. I used to have anxieties and I'm fine. It's like, well, I'm not fucking you. Like, get that through your head. I wish I could snap my fingers and it'd be gone. People mm -hmm. have such a hard time putting themselves in other people's shoes because they were wildly successful. So it should be easy for you well, as well. Well, because like, they no. also don't necessarily have the same type of anxiety that you do well right no you'll just mention it but they a think pseudo similar they situation they're like well just do that <clears throat> it's it's in your head it's like oh it's okay. like well i got nervous once before i went on stage and gave a speech to 1500 people so of course i have anxieties mm -hmm. it's not the same thing yeah you can be sad all you want but it's not the same thing as depression necessarily right i mean i i I would love to go back and be able to tell myself not to shut down 
or to stop whatever caused me from shutting down to, from happening. Where I could be, where you and I could have had a better relationship, or I, I could have had a big friends group, or, you know, didn't just hide it and school in a book or whatever. But, mm -hmm. I, and I, as for what I would tell my future self from now, I don't know. I'm still trying to figure out who the person I am right now is. I don't know what my future self's gonna be. I, I'm trying to become the person I wish I always was. And, you know, I guess I would say guard your heart better. Or don't be so free with your heart. But it's, it, I, I, I don't know. I, 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 I don't know. Oh, excuse me. I mean, there's yeah. a, uh, Kyle and I lucked out in the fact that our dad never, never, hated us right or sh shut us out or pushed us away or whatever but I, I mean I was long gone by the time he ever found out about me and I had, was like I had adopted the, the position that I don't care who knows what it's none of anybody's business it doesn't whatever they think doesn't matter to me mm -hmm. I'm gone I have escaped from that but I have a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, anger or, or, or something. Last time I was there, last time I was there to visit, my dad went up north and I, I, I had come back for him because he was having health issues. And I saw him for how long, Kyle? An hour? Yeah, before he left. Before That's I had to leave. It. And I told this to my mom. I was like, well, I mean, I came here to see him and he's, he's leaving. And then my, and I was like, but don't worry about it. Don't say anything or whatever. And then she went and told him like, call your son and visit with your son. And that made me so angry. Like I was fucking furious. I was that I was 15 again. I was so mad. I was like, why would you do that? Because now him calling me means nothing. It's meaningless because you told him to do it. He mm -hmm. couldn't do it on his own. And I was like, I forget it. I'm fucking done with this. And I went to bed. And I went to that room and I I texted my friend um, that I have issues with as it is. But we can talk about that <laughs> another night. And I said, why am I so angry? And then I started fucking sobbing sobbing at my mom's this was the last time I was there Kyle yeah I was bawling my eyes out why like why am I so what is making me so angry why am I so what what is it I don't know what it is I still don't and for some reason I thought the solution would be to move back but what it, the re reality was and I talked about this a little bit in uh, an email or a letter I wrote to everybody. It was like, I, I am, was so lost that I didn't know anything else to do but run. So I was doing, I, I was doing everything I could to force a situation to happen that every other aspect was telling me should not be happening. And if you believe in fate or you believe in destiny or whatever, I don't know. But every sign or every every step I was taking to make that move happen, something else was happening to say no. Right. And I was ignoring that and I was forcing it and I was attacking everybody that tried to speak up and help. I was like, no. And I was lashing out like fucking in a way that I haven't done since I was a kid. And there were times that I was in my shower crying my eyes out as a grown ass man crying. And I don't know why part of it was because I was leaving somebody that I didn't want to leave who could give a shit regardless. Part of it was that I was under so much pressure and so much stress and I felt like I was giving up every aspect of whatever was going on to do 
something I did not know what was going to turn out. <clears throat> and finally, when it all collapsed, it was like, uh, it was another breakdown. But it was another sign saying, maybe this isn't the right time. But even at that point, I wasn't freaking out about me. I was freaking out about everybody else. It was like, well, Danny and Glenn and everybody has done all these things to help this happen. And I've been so fucking mean and this and that to these people and this and this and this. And like, what am I now? I've got all these people that helped me do this. What am I doing now? I'm disappointing everybody on every fucking angle. And I didn't think a bit about myself until I said, I need to stop. I need to fix something. So I didn't, <clears throat> I didn't move. I started working more on myself and then, you know, whatever. But I forgot the entire point of my sentence, to be honest. <laughs> I was totally enthralled in what you were saying. I don't know, uh... but I don't know. But the fact is, is that just because Kyle and I had a, a decent dad doesn't mean we had a perfect upbringing. We were lucky in a lot of ways, but at the same time, I've clearly got a lot of shit that, it, that is still there, that it's still. Which is funny because you guys were such a stark contrast to how I grew up. And it's just like, there's times about it, I look at it and I just, the only thing we had in common, I guess, was that our parents were divorced, but I always saw, I'm not saying this is true, but like you guys were in a very different economic bracket than me and Kyle, I always saw how Kyle was or like what he received or whatever. But then again, on the other end, your mom at the time was always working yeah. and doing all the stuff. She was always vacant, but my mom was always there, even though that wasn't the best all the time. But I just couldn't understand, like, what Kyle was going Yeah, that was the thing, too, Garen. Yeah, exactly. You, with Dad and stuff, and I mean, I guess it didn't matter, but I got to skip so much school. Like, Mom wasn't, and she would argue this, which is still weird to me, she was gone so much. Like, <laughs> literally, I and I mean, I rubbed off on Ian, too. Like, she'd leave for work, and I'd come right back in the house from the bus. I'd skip school, like... I don't even know how I graduated to this day. Like I'd rarely go. I didn't. I you don't know the that. stories that me and Kyle did to get out of school. Mm -hmm. I skipped two and a half weeks of school straight. Yeah. I used well, to go and I used there. to go and and hide in a in a ditch kind of thing by the apart by Springwood Apartments Spring. or whatever it was. Yep. There were times I was out there jerking off. Just hanging oh, out God, in the wow. woods, just like, well, I got nothing God. else to do, so I'm just gonna, didn't, I'm gonna explore didn't my that body. Didn't much detail, but, but... Yeah, hell, I don't give a shit. Kyle used to hide in that ditch. Well, yeah, I know. Probably sat in my spooge. Ah, oh, my spooge. <laughs> spooge. Sick. But were... yeah, I, I didn't, I, and I would, they were, I would leave the house with a fucking pillow and sleep out in this ditch, this little woods but, area. But it was, well, yeah. Ian's house, he always had a mom, always a home cooked meal, and it was like so leave it to be. See, but it's funny because to you, that's what it felt like. To me, it felt like. Well, my yeah, mom, she was you know me and my mom. Abusive. Yeah. So I just saw you guys, and I didn't understand how. Like, you know the thing? It's to this day, it sticks to my brain. It blew my mind that Kyle had money for Taco Bell in the lunchroom. This blew my mind. I had free lunch. I didn't understand it. I'd see him eating his Taco Bell, and I'm like, I'm just sitting here eating regurgitated mashed potatoes. And to me, that was like the sign of like royalty and regal mm -hmm. living. If you could go but into the lunchroom and buy Taco Bell with your own money. Here's the thing, Ian. and We got stuff, I think, because of guilt. I yeah. do too. I think that... Like, that's why, too, because you knew our birthdays. You're like, oh, my God, your dad gives you so much. It's because, well, I didn't ever see him. Literally, it's him paying me back because, yeah, I think Garen's right. It was guilt. Mm -hmm. No, you're It was like, right, well, I, I do all of this stuff that I want to do and I ignore them constantly. In the back of it, I don't think he thought this consciously, but it's like, well, I go to baseball and I go to pool and I go to whatever else the fuck I do, work and this and that. So here's 50 bucks. Go buy yourself some toys and then we'll go to the movies. That I think was a, was, so our, our 
getting stuff and having stuff. I, I mean, I think if I could have more time with us together doing shit, I would have traded that for something else, I think. But... I can understand that. Like the stuff and I behind think, me. Like, and I don't know if it's true, but I think part of the reason too, like I almost think dad would have spent more time with us if we had his interests, like his baseball. I know he tried with you mm -hmm. and I don't know if it's factual, but I almost think part of it was like, well, they don't really like this anyway. So I'm just going to do my own thing. Like, I think if we like baseball, like our world would be totally different. We'd be BFFs with dad. You know what I mean? But because we lack that common ground, typical, you know, father, son, sports, that did not help us either. Yeah. No, no, definitely. Yeah, I, yeah. Because he even said, like, it was funny, like, one of the times that mom told him or whatever, he's like, when he found out we were both gay, because my mom actually told him at the same time about both of us, which was terrifying, but he said to her even, like, oh, I should have played baseball with him more. Like, I should have made it. Like, he was, like, I should have made Garen stick with it, even though I knew he liked it. Like, he thought that was the solution. Mm -hmm. I should have made my boys play sports more. It's my fault. It's like, okay, actually, I wish you would have, so I could have looked at all the hot dudes growing up. <laughs> but that's his, you know, that's that typical straight hetero mind oh sports i should have made him do it but i well, yeah, it's also regardless. that old mindset of yeah i think that like hurt our behavior. case because we didn't show interest in the sports he liked and he's like never took time out with us even more so because of that because he would have been in his glories like playing catch with his boys you know what i mean but yeah no i get that yeah it was just always weird growing up the way i did because i was always the poorest kid i knew and you know, even like my friend Sean, he was in a similar situation as you guys. His parents were never there and he just raised on whatever money they gave him. And to me, when I used to go to his house on the weekends, that was like spring break. Didn't have my mom to worry about. We'd go to his place. His parents were never there. We would just order pizza and play video games all night and have no one telling us what to do. Like that was my dream back then. Mm -hmm. Real, Not realizing that how terrible that could be, not having your parents be an right. active participant in your life. Mm -hmm. then again i always had a i kind of had a mix of that my mom was present in my life but not always in the best way right so yeah i don't i mean i don't know it's it's i'm surprised you guys live to this age and aren't huge with how much pizza you ate growing up <laughs> that's the thing that's i think that's why i to this day, eat some. I Got love comfort pizza. in it, uh, and that's why I have all these movies and I have all these this stuff mm -hmm. because it's representative. Literally, no, it makes sense. I'm the same way with video games. I'll always default, even though I feel guilt. Like I said, if some person like, and even Ian can hear, I'm like, what if Jake doesn't like that I play games, or what if this, or what if this guy doesn't like it? Maybe I should hide it. But it's like, why the fuck? And that's what going back to what we were telling Angie and Adam, like, why the fuck? If like, if someone doesn't like you for the things you like, then fuck them like that's okay that they don't like that but don't change yourself or be so worried because then it's like you're not being true to yourself which isn't fair to you or them yeah that's a great example because i'm not this person will remain unnamed but someone came in my place and i live on my own but i'm a complete juvenile so like when you go in my place i have like anime posters on my living room i have plushies from games i love i have all this game memorabilia and the first thing they walked in they're like aren't you embarrassed like, what if you had a girl mm. over? And I'm like, at this point in my life, I'm like, if they're disgusted by this and embarrassed by this, then I then don't want to be with them. them. Right. Like, I don't want to be with somebody who's in, like, looks at this and goes juvenile and kicks me out. Like, I don't want to be with that person. Right. But that's what it's it came like, down God to. That, like, we have different needs and experiences. To, like, I hate that. Like, grow mate. up. I hate that phrase. Yeah. Grow up. It's like, to me, it's. It's okay to grow old. It's not okay to grow up. I've seen enough like, quote grown ups that they make me miserable watching. Yes. Them. Yes. 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 That's why I say if I have to give up I the things give. I'm passionate about or that I grew up right. loving, then I don't want to do it. But I feel yeah, like that's. You tell yourself, Kyle, why would you want to be with someone who doesn't or guilt you or shames you? Like. Yeah. But I think know, that's a lot of the wow. reason why there's so many families that have those rifts and why I think that stuff will start to fade out because now a days that's not so much of a stigma as it was so like parents and their kids having similar interests isn't necessarily bad so 
I think that's actually going to lead to a lot closer families. Especially like games. Gaming in general, for sure, is... It's such a... Oh, it's not nearly taboo anymore. It's such yeah. a wide... Audience that... I, I honestly think that's going to lead to better relationships within families. I agree. Yeah, and there will be people that love that you love it. So the people that don't, they don't shouldn't even matter to you you know what i mean yeah. trust me i think that we were born in the wrong era because i would kill to be i mean everyone says that like i want to be young again but like mm -hmm. growing up in this era where the things you love and the things you care about aren't like looked down upon or you know looked at as a certain way i think that's great i think every once in a while i have this feeling that i was born either 20 years too soon or 20 years too late or 10 years or 15 years or whatever. I agree. On both ends of the spectrum based on the way I am. I don't know about beforehand. I, I think if I was born 20 years earlier, I would just be a sad old man. <laughs> but I mean, in terms of experiences and personality, it's like I would be good in the 60s and I would be good in the nows. You know what I mean? I think. Yeah. Although the gay thing would probably be more of an issue in the early days, but <laughs> yeah. right. But it, you know it. But that's the thing. That's the, the the one lesson is that nobody knows anything about anything, and that everyone can sit there and tell you what their experience is, but it's not going to be the same for you. No, I'm really looking have, forward. Look at Kyle and I grew up in the same house for a lot of it, and we had entirely different experiences. He had a big group of friends that he's friends with for years still. I had a couple friends, some of which I barely talk to anymore. And I, I was am, was envious of what they had. Vic says I would have been a David Bowie. Probably. <laughs> no, you'd have been George Takei. <laughs> oh my. <laughs> But, like, I never felt like I belonged anywhere. I still am trying to figure out who I am or where I fit in or where I belong or what I'm supposed to be. I don't feel like I'm part of the gay community. I don't. I don't go to West Hollywood. I don't do clubs. I don't do any of that shit. I've been... I've had one relationship. I've barely... I don't think I could actually technically say I've ever been on a date. If I'm being completely honest. So... Hmm. You know, I... I I don't know. Oh, I did go on a date, and I had to take her to the ER. <laughs> Sorry. Wow. So, there's my one date. I always say this. Like, I don't know what I'm doing now in terms of relationship-wise. I came out to California. Before that, I had never had a boyfriend, never had a girlfriend, never had any idea what any of that was about. Left. I mean, I, I sort of hooked up with someone I had a crush on throughout high school before I left. What? I didn't hear this story. Yeah. Did you, Kyle? I think so. Oh, okay. I probably really can't say the whole thing in public, but... That's totally fine. I just... It was a letdown. Surprised. It was a letdown. Um, Poor mystery, And it was man. only... It wasn't like, you know, it was just oral. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just oral. Uh, a poor... A poor... Uh, cookie Monster guy messed up oh. oh my god who's cookie monster do i want to ask uh it was like i think it was his little brother's cookie monster that was like in his room or something i don't know it doesn't matter but <laughs> just, I don't it got messed up it got it got dirtied <laughs> uh, anyway poor sesame street but and then i came to california and i met jason and we were end up together for 16, How? 17 years. Explain. I, okay, let's get to the real of this. Let's go back to this. How did you end up with Jason? So, and before I moved to California, I was talking to this dude who lived out here on instant on AOL. Like, somehow we met. I don't remember how, but we would talk a lot. And I was like, well, I'm moving out to California. Maybe we can hang out. And I was like, all right, cool. So we hung out a few times. Uh, and then... He introduced me to his cousin, who was Jason. And I thought he was super cute. And I was like, oh, he's adorable. Do you think he might want to hang out or whatever? And his cousin 
Uh, he, he showed me a picture of him. I was like, oh, he's really cute. So we all went to a movie and we met and was like, cool. And I was like, oh God, I really like him. He's really cute and blah, blah, blah. And turns out this guy, his name was Joey, thought we were dating. He thought I and jo Joey thought that I was dating him. Jo like we were uh, going out. A couple. Like, yeah. I'm like, what? No, that was never even discussed. I was barely living. I mean, I've been here for less than a year, I think, at that point. It was like, no, ew, no. And I never, that never even came, it never had ever occurred to me. And, and in fact, I never knew that until years later. Like, years later, Jason was telling someone how we met. And he was like, yeah, they, Joey thought they were dating. And he's like, well, don't worry about it. You can have him. I'm not interested anyway. And, and I'm like, as I turned him, I was like, wait. Wait, what did you just say? That none of that's accurate. So anyway, we—that's how we met. We met through this this guy I knew online, and uh, I went to his house once. We hung out, and then it just sort of it just sort of became a thing. I just don't get what I meant by the question. Is I don't understand how angsty, angry demon, fire breathing Garen got slayed by Jason and became so passive and not, I don't know, I don't know what's the word I'm thinking, aggressive. Like, you were very docile by the time me and Kyle moved out there. I... I think I... <sighs> I don't know what answer I can give to that. Ian, I don't know. Okay. Because it's not fair to me to say I regret that because I, I don't necessarily regret the time that I had with, with him. What I regret is the fact that I didn't have experiences besides that. Yeah. Was there ever a Sounds. time like in that 16 years where you thought maybe I should end this? And that you were holding on because you were doing like kind of self-loathing, like I'll never find anybody else, so I just got to stay with them. I think or there was did you it convince just yourself settled into that he was comfortability, the one? and there was no other option. That there was no like, like it's we, it's been this long. What's the point? Keep, I mean, I don't know. I, think I just remember when we were moving out there, like I was so afraid from you know, the, the past that we move out there. I was expecting just you to be just your fiery, angry self. And I, the, the moment that we always joke about was when you and Kyle started roughhousing in the living room and he literally had you on the ground squealing and squirming and begging you to be left alone as he could just beat you up. And I'm like, how is this Garen? I remember him being so intimidating and terrifying and he's like this big goof. <laughs> so I because he probably grabbed it. my finger. He did. What did you even do, Kyle? I yeah, I think I had a finger. <laughs> a finger. But you were squealing and so high pitched. I'm like, and what is begging. this? This is the man who made me make him bagel bites. Yeah, that this is the man who. That's I have Steve such off. a weird fear of of an appendage being broken, like a finger or something being broken that. If you grab it, I will immediately devolve into just a giggly, like, a complete... Like, I'll be laughing, and you'll think I'm having fun, but in reality, I'm laughing out of hysteria. <laughs> okay, note to self. So... If Garen comes at you armed, grab his pinky. Yeah. But as okay. for... The, I mean, I, I... I don't know where I would be... It's it's easy to say I wish I never would have ended up in a relationship for my entire adult life. It's easy to say that, but if that didn't happen, where would I be right now? Would I know who I know right now? Would everything? Would I be sitting in front of you guys, talking about my deepest, darkest fucking feelings and experiences? You know what I mean? Who knows? I don't know what would have been different. Maybe things would have been way better, but also maybe I would be a giant 
half dead old fucking dude in a trailer park. I don't know. That, 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 no offense to people who live in trailer parks, Ian, but <laughs> I'm like, oh. oh, that's you know what I mean. You know what he's I mean. talking about another Ian. I don't live in one of those, but I, I don't know. I mean, I still care about Jason. I mean, he's he's one of my closest friends, but I, I don't no, know. I don't, I, I, I don't. I just couldn't believe how much you like how he was so angry. He literally was old Garen and you were I don't even know what. But he was so angry and angsty and yelly and aggressive and mean. <laughs> and you were like the complete opposite of those things when you were with him. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I don't, I don't know. I need your verification. Do you remember the story about the fast food restaurant? That I tell all the time? Tell it. I, I, I don't want to repeat myself, but no, that was the time where, um... It was me, you, and Jason driving home, mm -hmm. and we, I think it was in and out I forget where we, we stopped somewhere, because, and Jason really wanted to get it, and I was fine with whatever. But apparently at that time, you only ate Wendy's. I don't know why, you were just obsessed Oh, with is Wendy's. this? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And we were in the line, and you, in the most polite way, as we got up to the window, just said, Hey, is it okay if we just stop by the Wendy's by the house? And then get what you want here. And then I just remember the rage, and he just peeled out of In-N-Out. And and we he didn't eat his food, he didn't order his food. We were peeled out of there going like 60, and he went right to Wendy's. And the whole time we were in the line, he was just berating you and asking for me to clarify. Like, he kept going, like, you believe this, Ian? And I'm just like, I'm just sitting quiet, I didn't know what to do. We ended up getting Wendy's. He got nothing. Then we got back to the house and it was me, you, Kyle, I think Peter was there. And he goes off telling his version of the story in which I guess he just forgot I was there because he told a story about how he went finally to his own place to eat. And then you interrupted him and demanded that you guys go to Wendy's and he couldn't eat now and he had nothing to eat and he was starving. And he then went into the room and you were nibbling fries like a beaten housewife. <laughs> and he came out of the room and goes, don't even think you're sleeping in here tonight. And just threw all your shit on the couch, which by the way was our bedroom. <laughs> and Kyle's looking at me and I'm literally at him going, none of that happened. This was not what happened at all. And you didn't say one word. You were just, <laughs> just ate your fry, your one fry. The I mean, guess Kyle, who you got there. the meal they wanted that night. <laughs> I just couldn't believe that. Like, you didn't say one word in defense of yourself. You didn't, like, stand up and go, I didn't say you had to leave. Because you I just... don't fi I don't fight. I don't like confrontation. I don't like being in yelling matches and screaming. I don't... I, I would rather just sit there and listen to somebody fucking act like an idiot and then... then... I get that. Contribute to it. I mean, there's times I, when I you'll push like me too far. I feel like old you took a doggy gate and push him against the wall. <laughs> I really you know? regret some of the shit that I did back then. What, are, what kind of... I just don't know where it came from. I mean, you were terrifying, so that was good. It's not good. I mean, I think I... I, I just imagine how better, much better... I honestly yeah. wish that we didn't... Uh, our relationship, Kyle and I's relationship was different. I wish we could have been able to talk about this shit years ago. Right. But you can now. Yeah, that's true, but... Hell, uh, me and Kyle talk about this all the time, and not even like blowing smoke up your ass. We had such a good time in LA, minus other parts. Yeah, I think yeah, if things if and that's the thing, like yeah, if he weren't there, then I think we'd probably still be in LA to be honest. Yeah, I remember staying up all night playing Magic up in the loft and like just whatever, having fun, going to comic stores, like just hanging out. Like, and Jason shit. and I were like oil and water. In we his def in Jason's go. defense, he doesn't. I mean, not to. I, I don't know what was going through his mind through that time. He his house is is now suddenly a one bedroom apartment was now full with five people. Five boys. I mean, yeah. we ended up having to take Peter in, and then we had you, oh. and we had Ian, and we had us, and we had one bathroom. One bathroom. In and the only bedroom. In the only bedroom. Yeah. So there was probably a lot. Well, we were all under stress. I mean, it's not like me and Kyle enjoyed 
living on a bedroom floor or a living room floor. No, I know. You know. I mean, but there was a lot of shit that that shouldn't that was. Who knows? I just meant the fact that I was surprised that the dynamic of me and Kyle got along as well as we did, even in yeah. that stressful environment. Yeah. And, you know, the outside sources, I guess, Peter and him. It's not so much that he would be a problem. I just meant, like, in general, it was shocking to me that, like, what I knew of the past you, that that went so well. Mm-hmm. Like, we had, I had a blast in L.A. No, it was great. Yeah, no, I, I had know. Scott and Katie then. I fucking loved it, and I missed oh, them yeah, it was great. so much. And it just sucks that, you know, things turned out how they did, because... Oh. But... Well, my time there was doomed once you left. I felt yeah. like. Because that got really weird. <laughs> when oh. Oh. Peter's on my side over things, over Jason, that's when I knew it was bad. And yeah, he you're being in too. Like, if you had a car, your life would probably be a lot different, too. You may even still be there as well. Who knows? Oh, yeah. Back then? Oh, definitely. Yeah, if you had a car. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, one of my biggest regrets is leaving. I mean, I'm not... You know, you never. Is, what is your dog holding? I'm sorry, that got so distracting. Oh, Adam said earlier the only relationship he had was with a girl, and this was way before he knew he was gay. And then you guys only have each other sometimes. He's. She's, sometimes we only have ourselves. She's got that that reindeer from Frozen. <laughs> okay. Who? I saw a giant antlered creature. Yeah. Well, definitely. I mean, you only have yourself in the end, so if you can't get comfortable with yourself that's a problem i know cue the rupaul saying mm -hmm. i don't know the rupaul saying what is it if you can't, if you love, can't yourself, love yourself how the hell are you gonna, love anybody, gonna love anybody else no oh, shit can i get a gay man hey puffin how you doing <clears throat> but yeah no growing up is hard is the moral of the story mm-hmm <laughs> Yeah, and everybody liked the thing. Like, yeah, Garen could think I'm fine. Everybody's got their own hidden skeletons and battles, and some people just mask it differently where people would have no idea. That's why you hear these stories, like, you know, especially, like, a lot of gay youth and stuff. Like, they kill themselves, and they're like, I never knew he was so happy. He was a great kid. And it's like, uh, they were great at wearing a fucking mask. Exactly. And it's so sad that that even exists. Yeah, I mean, I was... He was so great. There's there no way he was always happy. What happened? It's like um, you just didn't know him. I've 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 been in that situation. I know. Mm -hmm. It's you know you just I don't know. You just you just you just there's a, there's always a moment where you have to you have to decide yes or no and. I, the few times when I, it's, this isn't something that's happened a lot, but it, it has happened. I always chose no, and I am still here. Right. So, so Proven, if you have a question, ask away. Garen, did you ever cut yourself? Uh. Oh, wow. No. I have a. I have this little scar on my wrist and I don't really remember where it came from, but part of me thinks that it was that. But I've never done it as a thing. Like, it, it was never right. a thing. Yeah, it's funny. Like, we have a friend who used to do that growing up and I had never, like, when I learned about it, I was like, like I was so shocked that that was a thing. Mm -hmm. I was like, Really? Mainly because I couldn't imagine doing it to myself. Like I have a shot and I pass out, so it's like yeah, wow. I, I don't. I, I think can't even imagine. I, I think there's different versions of that that I may do. Like I think the way I spend money is a, is an aspect of that necessarily. That that I 
I knowing you shouldn't, but you're trying to like fill your it, anger or yeah, upsetness oh, with a void of happiness. Yeah, like, like yeah, that I'm, makes sense. I spend this money and buy stuff because it makes me feel some type of normalcy. Oh, I've done that too, and I bet you Ian oh, does do it that. too. Like we've bought games that like Very I manic. really shouldn't but fucking buy this because I can barely afford gas to get to work right now. But oh, yeah, that's I know I'm gonna be whole fucking life. happy playing it, so it's hard, definitely. It is so I, hard. I do that too. Well, again, mine also stems from the fact that I, again, grew up poor. So, I mean, I'm not trying to use it as an excuse, but, like, I've always thought that if I can live a life that, you know, with material objects, that I've somehow made it mm -hmm. compared to what I grew up. I mean, I grew up on welfare, on government cheese. Like, you know, I remember when I was a little kid, I took um, electric heater baths where my our gas got cut off. And my mom would take like a bun, like a Bunsen burner and heat water up and just dump it over your head. And she mm -hmm. never got there fast enough. So it got cold and you had freezing cold baths. <laughs> so like, that's how I grew up. And so like now I feel this need to like own the nicest phone or like get a new PC or whatever it is, or my microphone or whatever the heck it is. Like somehow that validates me and I'm trying to break away from that, but it is definitely something I struggle with. Yeah. Yeah, I do the same thing. I say, well, I need this new laptop because if I want to be, if I want to write, I can do this and I can take it with me anywhere I go, but then I don't end up writing. Mm. So it's like, yeah, talk about my voice work. Yeah. This microphone's a thousand dollars and I've done nothing. I mean, I've done some, but I've, I've gotten everything I need and I still, there's like a psychological barrier. Hey, I have a question for you guys. I have a, uh, someone in my chat's talking. Do you mind if I read it? No, Are you okay no, with me I... sharing that puffin? Well, you're getting confirmation. Read I'll read what Adam said really quick. It wasn't a question. Just put sometimes if I get overwhelmed by things, sometimes like I don't want to die and I don't know if I can say suicidal, but it's probably the stress that I've dealt with literally since I was born. Yeah, I think too, Adam, I've definitely, I think Ian can attest to, I've had suicidal thoughts, like wondering like why even bother living or going on because you're so like ashamed of yourself or things around you, but I've never really necessarily wanted to die or like I, I definitely don't think I could ever go through with it but I've had those thoughts of why am I even existing mm -hmm. and think it'd be wow it'd be just so much easier if I'm just gone like this is just pointless but well, that's I me. definitely had thoughts like that growing up no matter what it is something from school or myself or being gay even you know what I mean but yeah I've never I've never really gotten to the point where I'm like I'm, I'm doing it well, I, for honestly, me, kind of the point of hoping, like, please run me over, get hit, sorry, or something here. morbid. I, yeah. Kyle, honestly, when I was there last time, I was having that exact. I was there. I was like, what am I doing? Like, the people that I love don't love me. The my career is going nowhere. I've got literally nothing happening. When in reality. We're all fighting to get you there, buying this and this and that. In reality, oh, yeah, I'm out I've when got you two come. books published. I'm on a very popular show. I've got fans. Right. I've got friends who love me and care about me. I have all these good, positive things. But in those moments, these darkness moments, you don't see that. In whatever other shit that I've been struggling with my whole life, or that's been nagging at me or eating me away or whatever, it overtakes all of that. And it just, it's just a black wall and it's like it's why you bring that up what's the point what's yeah jake and i were just talking about this actually today uh, like and this is yeah another side lesson i wish we all do and I, I i really and truly strive to do this all day we're so focused as a society like even growing up every you could do like a thousand things so great but the one thing you do wrong will be pointed out like oh this is good but you should have or like, why didn't you like, it, and even us, we focus on it. Like I was in one of my uh, social work classes and they had us write a list. Okay, everybody take one minute. I want you to write, you know, 10 things, write all the negative things about yourself. And then they gave us another minute for write all the positive things about yourself. Everybody's negative thing was filled nonstop instantly. And most of the people had like tops of five things good they could say about themselves. Like that is so, depressing and disheartening like that we're like that like so many people it's just so easy to fixate on the negative it, well, it makes it sick for me i'm gonna like, go back to like the suicide focused. thing you spoke of 
um <laughs> like for me and i told you this before kyle for me because i'm not a very religious person yeah i've had those real dark times and but for me it's almost like this i'm a too afraid to know that it could be worse or that right. not knowing so yeah like it's not so much like the pain of death or like the idea that scares me it's more like what if it's worse than how i feel right now you know that scares me enough to keep me on the straight and narrow from it i'm not saying that's exactly healthy but that is one of my thought processes right. i want to point this out though before make sure puffin's still here this was back to what we were talking about earlier though for this is kind of from my perspective so i totally understand this he says, so my best friend growing up was gay, but didn't present openly as gay. When he finally came out, I was the last person that he told because he was afraid that I would treat him poorly like other people did. Yeah. I literally laughed and told him I love him and I was kind of upset that he didn't tell me first. I got At that At the from same Kim. time, I understood that this was such an internal psychological issue because I don't know I'm rambling. You're not rambling. I understand that a thousand percent because when Kyle came out to me finally, but I was like first. really hurt. Um, not and that's funny. He was hurt as being my first and my other best friend. Like I have two best friends, Ian and Kim. I told Kim nearly last. Like I had that same feeling that your friend had towards you. I think because Ian and I technically spent more time together. Like I was living with him at a point, so I was like, whatever. If I can't tell him, then whatever. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I did the same thing to my friend Kim, and she felt so upset and betrayed and she was so jealous that Ian found out first. But it was exactly what your friend said. I was so terrified. Like. It's scary enough to tell one person and then it's like, well, shit, she's a girl. What if she's like really hurt? And this was weird too. Like part of the reason it took me a while to come out to my other best friend. She told me this thing she was having really, I don't know if you remember Justin Lewis, Ian, but he oh, treated her like shit. She's like, all boys are gone. I'm never going to find anybody. Like you're my only hope. Not saying she wants to date me, but she, she said like, you're such a good guy. Like there's got to be others like you out there. And then I, I, I couldn't be like, oh, well sucks for you because i like dick you know what i mean i didn't want to break her heart that the only quote good guy she you know was looking up to as a hope for her future was gay so i was like oh fuck i can never tell her i'll destroy her world because she's like bawling that her boyfriend's an asshole and dumped her so i literally wrote her a letter finally and she was like one of the last piece per people i told and she was super upset so i get what you're saying because i did it to my other best friend yeah so it it's sucks. one of those things where but yeah, it's, it's be... just scary. You don't want to lose people, even though you know how close you are. It's still scary. Like I said, I don't know if you were on earlier. It told me, literally took six solid hours for me to tell Ian that I was gay. He did say it was weird because the people that he told first rejected him the most, which is funny because he told me first and I accepted him the most. Right. There we go. Yeah, so I... that would make it even harder for him to tell Puffin because he's like, oh my God, these people are rejecting me and I don't want to lose my best bud. Oh, there you go. Yeah. I what just you, felt like the point that I didn't really have anybody that it mattered if I told. I know I told my friend Jen, and uh, Jen and Mike, I think, were my two closest friends at the time. Jennifer, the Jennifer, one we made yeah. movies with? Yeah. Okay. And I think I told her on Instant Messenger, or maybe I told Kim, and I thought it was... <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, she said I you told her. She knew, her. allegedly. I don't remember, but it... You know, let's call it Kim. I don't, I, and it wasn't in school. I was out of school, I think, by the time I ever told anybody. Because she said she knew that first trip we visited you guys in California. After Vegas, the trip right? trip I'm still bitter about. Or was there two trips? No, it was there was two. Oh, was you, guys were, you had two trips? I saw Garen before Vegas. And then I found out after that, or during that trip, I can't remember, because I think Kim almost hinted. I'm like, what? No. I don't, I don't know. See, I don't remember any of that. Yeah. I remember being you guys being upstairs on the computer while I was downstairs on the phone with my mom. Yes. Where she was like, you gotta be careful, that boy, he's in love with you. I'm like, what? <laughs> yep. Wait, what boy? Jason. Jason. Oh. Because he came, we all went to Vegas together. Because his family was there also visiting someone. And I'm like, all right, well, let's just all go. And then after we got back and Kyle and Kim came back with us to L.A., my mom called and was like, yeah, you got to be careful, Karen. Jason's, he's in love with you. <laughs> he's, you should see how he, he You got to be around. careful. You just got to watch him. I'm like, Whoa. you might get the gay on you. And uh, then in Vegas, she's like, I need to her like an old married couple. And they're like, Ooh. and Jason thought he was like the straight 
straightest acting. <laughs> Which I don't understand. No, when he literally fairy prance, he's like, ooh, Kenneth Cole. And mom grabbed me. She's like, Kyle, I think he's gay. I'm like, and I knew at that point, I'm like, uh, uh, I don't know. Ask Garen. I don't think Garen knows, but he's in love with him. I'm like, oh my <laughs> God. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That's probably yeah, part puffin. of my problem too. Is that I never, I just, I locked it up, and I didn't. I had never really opened myself. Honestly, probably to this day, really, to most anyone, maybe only to my friend Jamie that I just met a couple of years ago in school. Like. Yeah, it's hard. You learn to guard yourself and how to handle yourself through the years. You're just trained. Yeah. I'm, well, it's hard putting yourself out there, even about less serious subjects. But I here's mean, the coming thing. Coming out as gay is about as serious as it gets. But even to this day, like, I got to the point where I was feeling good about myself and I was, like, buying new clothes. And then I took myself on the scale, to check my weight on the scale, and I gained, like, six or seven pounds. Don't talk to me about that. And it was like I I was ready to put a gun in my mouth. I was like, this is, f I, I was like, well, you're done. You're done. Now all that work you've done, no one's going to ever talk to you again. You're you're getting fat again. And this is it. You're done. Goodbye. It, it was, it was, I, I, I don't even know how to describe it. Like, oh, I, no, I, I understand a thousand percent. So I mean, when it comes to physical appearance, like I, it's, it's it's been my crutch like and i'm not gonna like try to like put anybody on a pedestal but i've been all of my friends are relatively attractive fit and somewhat and i've always been like this big goofy giant six seven blob man rolling down the road <laughs> and <laughs> it's just been Turner something where like kyle, you haven't heard some of the stories about how jealous of kyle i was growing up Remember when I laid out in the road, Kyle? Yeah, so it was at Kelsey's house. Yeah, we were at our friend Kelsey's house, and everyone was just literally massaging Kyle's weird bowl cut, because that was the thing back then, and just loving on his hair. Little did they know that he had no interest in what they were offering. <laughs> and all of these girls that we hung out with, they were just fawning over Kyle. And I'm just sitting there, this big, goofy, lonely hetero blob in the corner just feeling like a big loser and i got so depressed that i just went out and just started laying in the road i mean it wasn't anything real i wasn't gonna literally get run over i would barrel roll out of the way but it was just so depressing because i thought kyle was just like god's gift to women and uh. every woman we we know treated him that way and i just hated it i literally made me resentful for a while um I just hated myself, honestly. Uh, and the way you were so Joe cool about it, because I had time I didn't know you were gay. So like all these girls are coming at you and you're just like, Psh, like not interested. <laughs> I hated it. I, I know exactly what you, I literally, what I said earlier today, when I looked at myself on the camera a year ago, I don't think I would have ever done that. I can't believe I'm on camera right now. Yeah, it's I like the fattest head alive, I but I'm right never here. felt comfortable in my own skin. I never felt like I've never felt like anybody would ever find me attractive. Oh, same. I kind of still feel that way, even though I try to pretend I don't. <laughs> Definitely it's, same. It's yeah. And I was uh, I know exactly what you mean. I was always like, well, how come Kyle's got all these cute friends? It's not fair. And, you know, whatever. But yeah, you just. I don't know. Uh, that's, yeah, you know, and that's, that's what, what all the fucking you know. psychology books and science books should say. I don't know. I don't know if there's anything psychology mm -hmm. could really hit. Like, poor self-image is... I don't think there's any psychology book that would change how I feel compared to, like, beauty standards. You know what I mean? Like, there's no book I can read that's going to make me think that my head isn't the size of a small planet. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, I just don't... I don't really believe in that. Either you deal with what you have and change what you are if you need to, or you don't. Well, we just have to find that, that balance to be okay with Cold. whatever we're dealt. 
called Stop Eating Dark Chocolate Milanos, which are on my desk right now. Yeah, it's called Stop Eating an Entire Box of Girl Scout Cookies in One Sitting, which is what I did. <laughs> did you just ago. do that? Yeah. <laughs> and they weren't even the good ones. They were tagalongs. They were the best ones. Or what are they, dosi dos or whatever they called? Tagalongs. Oh, they were tagalongs. Yeah. And yeah, by the way, Puffin also said, I didn't read this earlier and I apologize. He said he thinks this is a very important conversation because I don't think there's a lot of talk or support around coming out. The impression I got from my best friend is that it was so lonely and I felt so bad for him. Like I would have been there for it if I could have. And I agree. That is what this place is all, what my place is all about. Right. I, I... Sleep while Adam thinks we're hanging out with us. Yeah. Thanks for hanging out, Adam. That's the point of what I like to do on Twitter, on Instagram, and this Twitch, that is to play, have a place where someone can come and be safe and be themselves and talk about whatever they need to talk about. So I don't know why they're in your chat and not in mine, but whatever. <laughs> Jeez, I'm sorry it's that my one viewer better, oh, that but I'm uh, super better, proud of. Okay. He's coming from my point of view. He's the, uh, he's oh, the one that was on the other side of the fence. Fair enough. But that's the thing, that's like that, uh, have you guys watched Love, Victor? No. No. Watch it. Well, maybe, and maybe not, it doesn't really think it would resonate all that well. It might, because of one of the characters. Wait, wait. I'm not so narrow-minded. No, no, I just mean in terms of, of... I mean, do you watch straight romance? Yeah, it's not necessarily the romance part, it's the, it's the coming to terms with being gay part. Yeah, okay, I mean... And the stuff that they, that this character goes through is like... I, it, I cried probably once an episode, if not more. Someone in the shower? No, that's the <laughs> kitchen sink. Oh. <laughs> well, no. But it's definitely a show I, I should. I would recommend anybody watch that's that's experienced. No, I always joke with Kyle, and this is gonna sound really weird on my chat. But like he, he, I know he doesn't get it. I get it. Why? But like even nowadays, like I look at being whatever, hetero or whatever. I don't see a lot of perk to it in my life. <laughs> I'm not somebody who wants to have kids. Honestly, it's becoming more acceptable now. But it's been hard to find in my whole life growing up, women with like similar interests as me. Mm -hmm. So for me, a whole life, I was like, I'd rather be gay. Honestly. <laughs> Like most of the people I know are men and I love them to death. And honestly, a lot of the hetero lifestyle per se was never something that I pursued, like the white picket fence and 16 kids and four dogs. Like I never had an interest in that. Yeah. So. It's I funny because I think I would be better. Like I think women are more attracted to me than dudes are. Or I the dudes the that I'm interested me. in. I look at a woman and they run, it's, but I can so go funny. to like a pride parade and have four guys dance with me all night. I mean, there was one time when I almost had, uh, uh, and I've never spoken about this out loud, by the way, oh, nice. I had a crisis of conscience and, or, or a, a moment of questioning, like maybe I can get out of this or something. And this was more recent than you would expect that I almost had a, someone I was friends with back home come over and like sneak in my room and in Michigan? Yeah. A female. And moms? Yeah, no, a dad's. Oh. When I was in your I was staying in your room. You weren't How there. How long ago? It was ten, Was that post Jason or while you were still with him? It was while we were together. Wow. Did and you know? And it was a, a woman. No, no one's ever, I've never talked about it. Wow. Wait, I'm trying to clarify. Is it was yes, a lady? Yes. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Yes. Never would have guessed. It did not did happen. Did she know that was what was going to happen? It didn't happen. Yeah. Oh, okay. But it did not. It didn't happen. I was like, you could, you could just come and sneak through the window and and whatever. <laughs> but it didn't. Scandalous. It did, it did not happen. It... Wow. Yeah. Did you ever have a crisis like that, Kyle? Or I know that you and Lindsay dated. But... No, I know. I mean, I, I did. Like, I struggled. Like, even like, oh, my God, I should be doing this. I should be trying more. Like, and I couldn't even fucking barely hold her hand. It took all night to do that. Trust me. I know. Just because my thing was like, I, I was so, because I loved Lindsay so much. Like, she's such a great person. Like, mm -hmm. as much as I wanted to change, like, I felt so bad. I'm like, I cannot do this to her. 
like i didn't even care about myself at the point so i'm like i have to keep this like my subconscious just would not let me try to like fuck or suck or kiss or anything like that i just cared about her too much it was why was kiss the third option fucking well, suck I'm, just, first. I'm just saying like well whatever you know yeah but yeah no i never really i, I just could i just was like i couldn't and sadly at that time i didn't know so when she'd come at all hours of the night calling yeah. me sobbing about how her boyfriend had no physical interest in her <laughs> and i couldn't give her a good answer oh, no. he's like why doesn't he like me i'm like he does uh... he's a dick <laughs> yeah it was super awkward mm. Mm, and then then the man came by with his rose and, and stole her away huh <laughs> this guy who will go unnamed was obsessed with Lindsay too and he came by like Frank Sinatra in the middle of homecoming while she was there with Kyle and like presented her a rose well I moved after that so remember yeah I know I'm just saying him coming like by with his little rose oh he was so dumb well, if I had never left she would still be mine <laughs> okay. Oh shit! On that yeah. note, <laughs> all right, we should wrap it up. It's two a.m. here, and I got to get up early to teach a class. Yeah, or to help teach a class tomorrow. Wait, you're teaching a class? Oh, you're a student teacher? I'm a co. I co. Teach. Basically, I'm the booker for this class. Where it's for the entertainment industry. In person. You failed to mention this. What do you? How fancy? It's on Zoom. It's not. It's just. I'm helping a friend out. Basically. That's so cool. Yeah. Awesome. All right, we gotta do it again. We're here every Friday, so you, you, Kyle, you and Ian are welcome. This was great. I'm glad we did this. I had a great time. Yeah, we could do the same thing every week if you guys wanted to. Yeah, we um, have more questions, but we could definitely. Well, that's the plan. Hopefully, the more we do it, the more often hey, we're able to come in. Like puffin time was a lot here. Okay. Puffin's welcome anytime. Tell Puffin his it. friends welcome, or her, her friend, or them. Yeah, they, them. All right, guys, thank you for coming. That's the it for the overnight hours. Let me put everybody's thing back up. TH3RD underscore S. How hard it is. I you know, just... I was told in branding school to make my brand as hard to understand as possible. They'll always remember it. I could, mm -hmm. Melfi, Melfi, I could uh, make commands Melfi, out of this, but Oh, I put it wrong. Hey, I currently have my banner and my avatar being worked on as we speak okay by who uh someone at my work zoe she's a graphic designer oh really man talented. i'll ask her to if she wants to do mine i'll ask her i don't know how she's getting she literally is leaving for a fancy graphic design job that she just got so i'm not sure she's oh i'll pay but... i mean I'm, i don't have a lot of money but i'll pay her something for sure. <laughs> oh i'll pay in platitudes no no i'll give her money i'll talk to her and see if she has space like she's really talented her portfolio is sick Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you for doing this. We'll do it again. Yeah, it was fun. Everybody Are we else? doing anything for your 12-hour extravaganza? And when do you think you're going to do it? It's either Sunday or Tuesday. I haven't decided what day yet. Tuesday, I'm off, so. So I should do it Tuesday? I mean, it's not. don't base it just on me, but that's the day I'd be available whenever. Okay. Sunday, I work. Maybe we should do it Tuesday, because I don't have, I have never enough funny on Monday and Wednesday. We can talk about this off the air. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. All right, guys. Hey. We're done. Thank you all for coming, hanging out with us. We'll do it again next week. Um, this is my brother Kyle at Melfi Melfis, Ian at Third Shift. Click their links in the chat. Follow them. Watch them. Get them to affiliate. Except for Ian. He doesn't <laughs> want to be affiliate. I, I, I might change my mind on that. Uh, we'll see. All right. Well, until that next time. I don't have a sign off. <laughs> Me neither. Good night, guys. Good night. Night. <laughs>